Hey everybody, Ed here, and this is the Rock Cut Review. Now before we get started with today's worst whiskey watch, I want to ask you something. What do you think is the biggest scam in whiskey today? There's a lot of options. Is it companies buying up MGP stock and trying to pass it off as locally made, homegrown craft spirits? Because that's pretty messed up. Looking at you, Templeton. Is it the ever-increasing prices of bourbon and those price-gouging terrorists on the secondary market? Yeah, that, that one's pretty fucked up, too. Or maybe it's just everything McAllen's done in the last five years. <coughs> Unfortunately, there seems to be a lot of shady behavior in the whiskey world. But I would contend that there's one that stands above all else. And it's this. And things like it. This is Sensei Whiskey, product of Japan. Or so they claim. Now, I'm sure if you saw the title of this video, you guessed where I was going with that. And if you've been in the whiskey community for any amount of time, you've probably seen articles about just this issue. But you know what? The Rock Cut Review is never too late to jump on a bandwagon. So what makes this one so fucked up? Sensei whiskey is one of many whiskeys coming out of Japan that claim to be Japanese, but in reality are simply imported spirits from other countries like Scotland or Canada that are blended together and then exported back out with a new Japanese label on the front. So why don't we taste a little bit of this? I'm gonna tell you right now, I've had it. It's not good. There's not a lot here. There's not a lot to talk about. But we'll do it anyway, because this is a worse whiskey watch. Oh yeah. Smells like... Smells like chemicals and caramel. Mm, not great. Not great. Ugh, ugh, ugh. So how are they getting away with this? Well, the rules for Japanese whiskey are incredibly lax. There are very few regulations about what is actually Japanese whiskey. Japanese whiskey need not be made in Japan. Like I said, it's distilled somewhere else. They import it, then they export it. Suddenly it became Japanese somewhere in the middle of the process. You can import Scottish malt, mix it with Canadian whiskey, send it back out. That's all you gotta do. And I know, I know, you guys watch WhiskeyTube, you've heard about this, right? It's, it's crazy, you, but you, you've heard, you know, you know, other people have talked about it. But here's the thing, a lot of people don't know about this. People are buying up this bottle for 40 bucks a pop at my liquor store, not knowing that this isn't Japanese at all. Look at this label, right? That son of a bitch looks Japanese. It says product of Japan on it. It says that it's from Japan. Like, look at this, I love this. It's got this sticker on it that says imported. Uh, let's see if we can get this to focus. It says imported on it. Like it was imported from Japan, right? But little do people know, it was imported into Japan too. <laughs> Honestly, this stuff gives me a headache. This is so, so like fakey sweet aspartame -y. Oh! Now the government of Japan has kept these regulations relatively loose and a lot of producers have been okay with that for the simple reason that it lets them make a very, very cheap whiskey for the domestic market which is where a lot of Japanese whiskey is going. A lot of Japanese whiskey is going into highballs drank by the Japanese. And if you're an average citizen of Japan who just needs something cheap and easy to make your highball, you might not really care where it comes from or if it really is distilled in Japan. But for us Westerners over here who are super excited about Japanese whiskey and how great it is and all that, it can be disappointing to find out that it wasn't really made there, that it really has no Japanese terroir whatsoever. So if the Japanese are just importing whatever and then re-exporting it, how are you gonna tell the difference, right? Well, one red flag right off the bat for me was that they spelled whiskey with an E. Japanese producers spell whiskey the Scottish way, that is, without an E. America, Ireland spell it with the E. Generally, there are some producers in Ireland and America who forgo the E. However, it pretty much never goes the other way. Japanese producers, Scottish producers, spell it with a Y. Second of all, this little fella right here, product of Japan. 
Same thing if you see made in Japan. If it doesn't say distilled in Japan, that's a tip off that you might have a problem. You can trust single malt that says distilled in Japan. It had to come from one distillery because it's single malt and it was distilled there. So you know it was made at the distillery they say it was. There you go. So brands like Yamazaki, Miyagikyo, Yoichi, those are all pretty safe. All three of those brands are either Suntory or Nika. Those are the two big guys in the Japanese market, right? And you're thinking, hey, neither of those guys are gonna do this wishy-washy crap where they're importing other people's stuff, right? Right, they're not gonna do that. Except one of them kinda does. And this is, this is the part that makes me sad because I always thought Suntory and Nika, you could trust them. And apparently you can pretty much trust Suntory products. However, that's not so true of Nika. In a recent New York Times article, link is down below, Amiko Kaji, who is the international business manager for Nika, admitted that Nika's blends do use some foreign malt. Now they own Ben Nevis, so you can guess that there's some scotch malt in your Nika blends. She didn't say which ones, but it's a safe bet that even some of those high-end ones probably, probably contain a little bit of that Ben Nevis in there. I don't like that. And that's the problem we're dealing with here, right? Is that if you make a world blend of whiskey, like say, Ichiro Malton Grain, and you're honest about it and you say, this is a blend of Malton Grain from around the world, Okay, cool. That's awesome. We know that you got it from multiple different places. You blended it in Japan and you sold it. Great. Fantastic. However, let's face it. If you say your whiskey is Japanese, that means people expect it to have been made in Japan, distilled and aged, right? Especially if you're a layperson, you expect it to be made in the same way as any other whiskey with a geographic designation. Irish whiskey has to be distilled and aged in Ireland. Scotch whiskey, distilled and aged in Scotland. Bourbon has to be distilled and aged in America. Right? This makes sense. It's the common language. But if you see Japanese on the label and you just assume, sometimes you're going to be wrong. So there have been some people in the uh, Japanese whiskey industry who have defended this practice of importing other people's whiskey and selling it as Japanese whiskey. Uh, I'm not going to name names for fear of offending anyone, um, except that it was this person. And here's his picture. Basically, what he said was that, well, listen, even, even companies that are distilling whiskey here are importing a lot of their ingredients from Scotland, right? You know, your peated barley and your unpeated barley and all this stuff, right? So is it really homemade whiskey? Is it really Japanese-made whiskey? You know, basically, it's the same thing as importing other people's whiskey. Motherfucker, are you serious? God damn, that is the most intentionally obtuse bullshit I have ever heard in my goddamn life. What the fuck, man? Seriously, listen, I get it. I get it. We w I'm sure it would be great if Japan could grow all its own barley and, and distill it and make really, like, local terroir Japanese whiskey. Fucking fantastic. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. But listen, importing some uh, somebody else's grain and then fucking distilling it is a goddamn far cry from importing someone else's already made product and shipping that shit out. And okay, I get it. You might blend it some. You might blend it with some locally made whiskey. Cool. That's great. That's great. But you fucking know what you're doing. You fucking know you're trying to pull one over on the average person. Don't pull this, oh, I'm just trying to make a quality product. It's basically the same as my competitor's bullshit. No, motherfucker, that's not what this is. That's not what this is. You're just, you're fucking pissing on my leg and telling me it's raining. Oh God, this sensei shit is so fucking bad. There's like a slight caramel taste to it. But, like, it bites so hard, man. It, it is so, so, like, gasoline-y. Like, this is, this is the first time I've had to say this in a while, but it's fucking diesel-y, man. Now, luckily, there are some people who are working to rectify the situation, including Mamoru Tsuchiya. 
This guy is part of the Japanese Whiskey Research Center. Now he's created a set of rules. One of these rules is that to be called Japanese whiskey, it has to be distilled in Japan. That fucking makes sense to me. Now he was going to institute these rules at the 2020 Tokyo Whiskey and Spirits Convention. However, that got canceled because of COVID, blah, blah, blah. So that didn't really happen. Now, Mr. Tsuchiya, he isn't a government body, right? He can't really make people follow these rules. However, if they want to have their stuff featured as Japanese whiskey at shows like that, then they're going to want to follow those rules so they can look good on the stage. And I think that's that's a good step. That's a good first step. I don't think the Japanese government's going to come around on this anytime soon. They seem very okay with keeping things lax when it comes to whiskey production, which I think is terrible, and they really got to work on that. So it's going to come down to the industry deciding, we don't want to look like jagoffs in front of the entire world. Let's try making some actual Japanese whiskey. And again, listen, you want to do a world blend? You want to make some scotch or Irish or bourbon or fucking Mexican whiskey? I don't give a shit. You want to mix that shit in with your Japanese whiskey? Fine. Great. Do it. I'm, I'm down. I'll try it. It probably will be good. Tell me that, though. Let me know that that's what you're doing, right? That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. And then if you want to make Japanese whiskey, purely Japanese whiskey, fucking just distill it in Japan. Oh, and, and age it there too. I think that's only fair that you also age it there too. I mean, I guess, I guess, you know, if you want to age it at sea or whatever, like the Kayo piece of people, you know, that's okay too. That's, that's fine. But you know what? Just be, be open about what you're doing. That's always what it comes down to, right? Anyhow, um, this video really wasn't about Sensei Whiskey. This was apparently just mostly me getting on my soapbox and yelling about shit. Um, but yeah, Sensei Whiskey's shit. It's, it's not good. It's thin. It's really like, ah, oh, ah, ah, it's so underaged and spiky and fucked up and gasoline-y. Anyway, don't buy this shit. Don't buy it. For many reasons. It's bad, and it's a scam. And just be careful about the Japanese whiskey you drink. Anyway, this has been an episode of The Worst Whiskey Watch. Erica sat this one out. She didn't want to drink this crap, so I got to yell at the camera for a minute. Until next time, this has been the Rock Cut Review. Make sure to comment. Tell me what you think is the biggest... Ah, tell me what you think is the biggest whiskey scam in the world today, or just tell me about what you think about Japanese whiskey more generally. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and stay healthy, stay safe, and stay rotten. Shite. <clears throat>